Hi, my name is Dr. Anthony Lamera and I'm a cardiothoracic surgeon. Today we're going to talk about repairing an ascending aortic aneurysm. But before we get started though, let's review the anatomy of the heart and also the aorta. This is a model of the heart here. I like to think of the heart in terms of sides. This is the right side, right atrium, right ventricle, and this is the left side, left atrium, left ventricle. Blood will classically go from the right atrium to the right ventricle, left atrium, left ventricle. When the blood's in the left ventricle, the ventricle will squeeze and push blood to this structure. This is the aorta, which is the largest blood vessel in the body. The blood will then go to the brain through these, or, through these vessels, and then it will go behind the heart to the other organs, the extremities as well. Now, we're gonna focus on the aorta that's just in the chest. The chest, the aorta in the chest is subdivided into the ascending aorta, until the blood vessels and the, uh, the, the great vessels in the arch, and this is referred to as the arch of the aorta. And below, or be, be, uh, below the left subclavian artery here is the descending aorta. So once again, ascending, arch of the aorta, and descending aorta. For the purposes of our discussion, we're gonna fo focus on the ascending aorta. Now, the normal size of the ascending aorta can vary somewhere between two and three centimeters. When it's above three centimeters, it's classically referred to as an aneurysm. An aneurysm is just a large blood vessel. Now, we actually will be concerned when the blood vessel gets to be 5.5 centimeters. That's been shown in previous studies to be the size at which the aorta can rupture. If the aorta ruptures, the patient can essentially bleed to death. Now, there are indications to operate before the aorta gets to 5.5 centimeters. For example, number one, if there's a collagen vascular disorder, for example, Marfan's disease. Those patients have tissues that are weaker than others, and it can get larger faster, and also can rupture earlier. And for those patients, we'll operate sooner. Secondly, if the patient has a bicuspid aortic valve, we'll also operate on those patients earlier. Patients with bicuspid aortic valves can get aortas that enlarge faster, and can rupture sooner. Just a reminder, most patients have tricuspid aortic valves, and it's the bicuspid that I'm referring to. And for further review, this is the left ventricle, once again, and this is the aorta. The blood will go from the left ventricle to the aorta. Between the two is the aortic valve. When the aortic valve opens, the blood will go through, and when the aortic valve closes, the blood will stay in each area. And that's the aortic valve that I'm referring to. It's commonly tricuspid, but when it's bicuspid, it can lead to aneurysms. The other indication to operate before the aneurysm gets to 5.5 centimeters is if the patient's already gonna have surgery for something else. If the patient's going to the operating room for bypass surgery or valvular surgery, and the aneurysm is there, well then you'll fix that or repair it anyway at that, at that time. Now, the aorta is actually made up of three layers. There is an intima, a media, and an adventitia. The intima is their innermost layer of the, wall, of the aorta. It actually has a smooth surface, and that's where the blood goes through. There's a media, which has muscle and elastin fibers, and that allows the aorta actually to expand and contract with each heartbeat. And the adventitia is the strength layer of the vessel. Now, most people who have aneurysms actually have no symptoms. And actually, are, these aneurysms are found incidentally. The patient's going to have surgery or the patient's gonna have an X-ray or CT scan for some other reason and they find the aneurysm. For the patients who do have symptoms, they classically will have either some pain, either chest or back pain, sometimes jaw pain. They can also have trouble breathing. They can have trouble swallowing. The aorta is surrounded by other structures, the airway, the esophagus, and as it gets larger, it can affect those organs as well. Now, if you're gonna have surgery on the ascending, ascending aorta, excuse me, first the patient will get to the operating room, they go to sleep, then we'll prepare them for surgery, which essentially means we're prepping and draping them. We'll then open up their chest, we'll put their heart on the heart-lung machine, and then we'll give the heart medicine so it's not contracting. Now, essentially what we're doing for this surgery is we're replacing the ace in the aorta, which essentially means 
we're cutting here, cutting here, and taking it out, and replacing the aorta with a, another material referred to as a graft. There's different types of grafts, but the most common one is a Gore-Tex graft, and this graft will last forever. Once the graft is sewn in, we'll make sure there's no bleeding. We'll then wake up the heart, come off the heart-lung machine, and when we're, again, comfortable, the patient's stable and not bleeding, we'll close the chest and take the patient to the intensive care unit. Once in the intensive care unit, the patient will classically spend one or two days, and then they'll go to a regular room for another three or four days. Most patients spend approximately five or six days in the hospital, then they'll go either home or rehab. Now, we do these operations all the time, but there's still risk involved. There's risk of infection, there's risk of bleeding, there's a risk of stroke, and there's even a risk of death. All this will vary based on the patient's risk factors, which, are, which include their medical problems, and also if you're doing other parts of the operation. For example, if the patient's having bypass surgery or valvular surgery, all that increases the risk of surgery. Okay. That's a basic description of a repair of an ascending aortic aneurysm. If you have any additional questions, please let me know. Thank you very much.